Hi everybody, welcome to another tutorial on the Beep Street Drum Body Modular Groove Box. In this video I'm going to talk about the gate inverter and how you can use that. So, you can find the gate inverter and the uh, utility and there it is. And it's very simple to use, it just invert the phase of the signal which is coming through. It has also an interesting uh, um, other, if you like, feature because it detects also passing down uh, the signal passing below zero and therefore it can be used to generate a pulse signal as well. So for example, let's add under modulator an LFO. Okay, and then also let's add, uh, for example, under the utility, a oscilloscope. Now, let's connect the oscilloscope to the LFO. Let's change the X scale. And here you can see the typical sine wave coming from the LFO. Now, let's connect the gate inverter, not to the pulse from the MIDI to CV back, but directly to the output from the LFO. Now, let's uh, add another oscilloscope and let's connect that oscilloscope to the gate inverter. And now let's change the X scale. As you can see, what is happening is that he is actually taking uh, the uh, the wa sine waves and is detecting when it's coming below zero and inverting it. So it's going to create a uh, pulse uh, signals, which can be quite interesting. So how can we use this? Well, let's um, look at some, as they call it, uh, use cases for this. So let's, for example, add a under generator a an instrument okay like for example key a like so then let's add also a second instrument like so for example a pad okay and then let's add a, a very right inside a mixer like so let's connect the mixer to both instrument like so oops there now we have both instrument going through uh, the mixer right now between the two instrument let's move uh, dust pad a and let's add under utility a gate inverter now when i do that it will connect uh, to the pulse which is coming through the track and uh, because that will be down to zero it will invert that that down to one and therefore it will trigger the second instrument <laughs> let's turn down the mixer signal so you can actually you don't hear any more the sound so something we can do of course to um, to um, another use case if you like that we can use is actually um, for example let's um, oops let's add under muff a not a casillas but a and rack like so let's take one of the input from the gate inverter and the other input let's take it directly from the pulse coming through the MIDI to CV rack okay so if I now turn on By the way, I forgot to connect the dust pad A pulse directly to the end rack, like so. 
right. If I now turn on the two, um, as you can see, the two mixer dials and I scroll, right. So what is happening now is that a pulse signal is uh, going through when I click and um, and it becomes negative while I'm click through the great inverter so the dust pad A is not producing any sound when I let go the pulse is the uh, initial pulse um, going through the gate inverter is positive then becoming uh, sorry is negative then it will become positive and but because it's going through an end rack which will output a one signal only with both are uh, one or up as a signal um, it means that the dust spot A is actually not producing any sound because if you think about it um, the signal which is coming through when I let go um, uh, the note and, and lift my finger the signal is going down to zero this is going to uh, change it to one or to, to a positive signal which is going through here but this is taking a positive signal here and it's taking the pulse from the MIDI uh, to CV um, back here which would be zero therefore one and zero make zero and therefore there's no pulse which is going through the dust pad hey which makes sense now let me show you something else which is quite interesting let's add a under modulator and LFO okay and let's connect that LFO to the gate inverter and if you remember the first um, explanation when I showed you the oscilloscope the sine wave coming out from the LFO will be converting into pulses that will go through the uh, gate inverter and therefore they will come here as a pulses 1 0 1 0 1 0 etc and together when I press here on the on the uh, pad or on the key it will allow different pulses to trigger the dust pad A so let's listen so what's happening here is that when I press a key on the keyboard you hear the first instrument which is the APF keys A but at the same time the LFO is also triggering the gate inverter the sine wave is transformed into pulse signal which are then going through an end module and as long as I'm keep a key pressed the output of that will go through the dust pad A as pulses and it will sh and it will sound like I'm triggering multiple times the dust pad A and let's uh, increase the volume on the dust pad A so you can hear it that it's triggered multiple times and of course you can verify that uh, add the an oscilloscope again here on the utility scrolling down add an oscilloscope and linking that to the end module and change the scale like so and press the keys on the keyboard so those are the pulses which are going through to dust pad A so this is an interesting uh, way to use the gate inverter is practically uh, in conjunction with an LFO is becoming almost uh, a trigger uh, almost an arpeggiator although it is the same n uh, note repeated into um, the dust pad A so you have one instrument sounding normally and plus the second one which is actually repeated multiple times so that's one way that the, you, you can use the gate inverter to actually change that sound wave which is coming from LF1 of course, that's one way. The, the normal way, which I showed earlier, is actually to negate the phase, uh, which therefore it will uh, uh, go back to um, use cases where, for example, you want to trigger a sound when the pulse is falling down to zero, the pulse which is coming in into the track. 
Okay, this is a, a probably a more technical tutorial than others. I hope um, uh, it made sense and you could follow it through. Um, and as always, uh, see you next time. Bye.